Hey, what is up guys? I wanted to do a video tutorial for you uh, about dive gates. So dive gates are something that are cropping up more and more at multi-GP races. We saw them at nationals. Uh, they're not going anywhere, so we really need to be able to practice them. And I'm going to go over a few techniques and tricks uh, that I used when I was first um, getting used to dive gates, as well as some common mistakes that I see um, some pilots do and uh, what to avoid as well. So I'm going to hop in Velocidrone here. I'm on the Oasis January 2020 track. If you want to fly this track along with me, you can. You can just go download it, search for Pilot Danimal in Velocidrone Track Editor, and you'll find it. Uh, there are a couple dive gates in here that are um, a lot of fun to practice and give you a, a good field uh, to do some of these maneuvers on. So the first thing I want to touch on is, is what we should be avoiding in our dive gate in the dive gate approaches. And so when I first see some uh, newer pilots see a dive gate, first of all, a dive gate is a pretty intimidating um, obstacle when you haven't done one before. Coming up and down through a gate is very odd because you have the ground rushing right at you. And so a lot of people um, I see approach a dive gate from an excessive amount of altitude because they feel like, okay, I'm gonna have enough time from this altitude to make all the corrections I need to make in order to guarantee my success going through it. Now that sounds logical, right? You, you're, it's like you're really far away from a gate and you're trying to give yourself enough time to make all the corrections through it. However, it's actually backwards. You want to reduce your altitude on dive gates because the higher you are, the faster you're gonna be falling through these things. The first tip and trick is to keep your altitude as low as possible. That allows you to keep your speed um, more constant and you're not rushing through this gate trying to make last minute corrections all the way through it. The two stay away from approaches that I'm gonna kind of caution you from. Don't approach it like a sliver like that. Trying to trying to thread a, a quad through a dive gate because I mean here's here's a good low altitude idea right but now you can't even really see your entry point you have to you have to time your throttle cut just right so your quad skips through there. That's not something we want to do. So um, again, we control our altitude. We don't want to go all the way up here trying to fight ourselves through and then hit the ground. And then we don't want to stay so low but also so far away from the gate that we lose our our uh, entry entry point there. You can see I'm bouncing off the the gate. So, um, a couple of techniques I'm going to touch on first. The first one is orbiting the dive gate. So, actually doing a spiral around the dive gate if you've never done a dive gate before. Just getting yourself used to climbing up to a up to the opening, spinning around it, and then just dropping your throttle into it. Okay. So, doing a, a nice slow orbit. And then just kind of falling through it. The the spinning or orbiting uh, motion will actually help you um, kind of get pulled in to the dive. So again, starting from the ground, climbing up, and then you're just gonna keep rolling into it, and then now you're through. So I'm just spinning around again, going from the right hand side and the left hand side, spinning around, and then just slowly lowering my throttle and letting my uh, quad fall through the middle. Okay, so that is one technique to get yourself used to just going through the dive gate. If you're having trouble um, overshooting and aligning yourself up first, just spiraling around it from the ground up and then slowly dropping through the middle of it, um, that might work for you. Now, as you progress, you want to be able to do it faster. So. It's obviously not fast to go and orbit a gate for however long that takes you and then drop through it just to complete the obstacle. We want to be able to um, really hit the gate and then keep going on to the next part of the track. So uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to practice. The first thing I find the most useful is just rolling into the gate. So as I approach the gate from this side, I'm just going to roll left and then drop in. You can watch my, my stick overlay here. So I'm chopping throttle, 
as I'm up over the gate and then adding throttle to catch myself after I fall through. So I'm just rolling right. Okay, and then I'm rolling left. Okay, so practice that. Practice both ways. This is probably one of the, um, I feel like it, it feels the most natural and simplest, just rolling over the top of it, just slowly increasing your altitude and then, then just rolling and falling through it. So what's nice is that as you roll, your, your thrust line actually helps you point down and into the gate a little bit. And so there's not a ton of throttle cut that you need to be doing. Your quad's gonna naturally be um, trying to pull itself through the gate there as you roll into it. Um, so just practice that. And then as you're rolling in, notice that af after I'm through the gate, I'm pulling my nose back and I'm adding throttle to help catch me. So there is some momentum that you need to be able to arrest your quad from doing. As you roll in, lean back, keep the nose up, and then get level with the ground again so you can go on to your next gate. And then the, the last approach that I'm going to talk about is the split S motion. So you can practice split S's on any gates. As you go up and just roll over the top of them, a split S is a very, very common, um, I guess, feature or obstacle on a track. And so if you don't know how to do split S's yet, just practice those. So I'm chopping throttle pretty early, allowing myself to kind of float into position. And then I add throttle when I see the gate, when I have good sight picture, see the gate and I want to pull myself through it. Okay, and then I'm adding throttle and then pitching back. Just like that. The key takeaways is altitude. The lower you are to the gate, the better it's going to be. You don't want to give yourself all this speed and momentum trying to trying to dive from here and then crash into the ground. That is, uh, I see it all the time. You just don't want to do that. So the the other thing is the the different entry methods. You can do a toilet bowl method when you're very first starting to learn, getting comfortable climbing, and then falling your quad through the middle of that gate. And practicing from the, the left hand and the right hand. There you go. The other method, uh, my favorite one, being coming along the side of the gate, pop up, and then you roll into it. So stay low, just pop up enough, and then you roll into it. Okay. And then the last method is the split S or over the top method where you kind of chop your throttle early on, float yourself over the gate, then add throttle and, and, and lean back to pull yourself through the rest of it. All right, and so I think the last tip or trick that I have, and it really applies to all gates, is it's okay to circle back and redo your line and your approach. If you feel a little bit off, um, there's no there's no shame in in just circling back and, and getting back on your line to, to keep going through. I've seen plenty of pilots, myself included, trying to commit to a line um, that is off. And then and in, by committing to it, you result in a crash. So uh, the faster you get, uh, the more damage that's just going to uh, take a toll on your quad. But especially when you're doing dive gates, right? So as you're approaching these things, if your line feels off like this, there's no reason to try to force yourself through it. So just, just take a moment, circle around it or something like that, and then drop through. If you come up and you overshoot it, there's no reason to try to force yourself back into it. Right? Just take another another stab at the approach and then keep going along with your race. Anyways, that's just kind of the little parting thought I had. Um, and it, it does save your quads a lot of the time if you're just willing just to be like circle back and then re-go. Um, people do it all the time. It's good to do it. Saves your quad, gets yourself mentally kind of reset to be like, okay, I'm back on it. I'm not no longer fighting this off um, line or trajectory the whole rest of the time. So. Either way, hopefully this video was useful. Uh, I had a lot of fun making it. 
and uh, take care. God bless, guys.